Boys, UFC 304 just finished and you know I'm trying not to go too crazy here because YouTube doesn't like it when you start just swearing and just roasting people in the first minute so we're going to try to keep it a little bit PG friendly so you know to start it off shout out to the UK fans for keeping this card alive even though it was like 6 a.m. over there shout out to you guys and you know we're gonna do some matchmaking we got every single winner a few losers here and there on the main card as well as the early prelims and the normal prelims we're gonna go through every single one of these guys first starting with the main card we're gonna mash them up with who i think they should fight next you know let's just let's get into this card you know it was a fun card there were definitely some dull moments here and there all together pretty fun entertaining fight card like i said shout out to those uk fans keeping this card alive because like i said there were some dull moments here and there especially in that main event but you know you guys kept it alive you kept the aura in that crowd going so shout out to you guys and I was just we're living in the worst possible timeline let me just start off with that we're living in the worst possible timeline Bilal Muhammad is a fucking champion and it's like I made a video you know I think everyone in that video that I made is just cursed and is gonna lose now I pretty much made a video that if these guys win their next fight I'm ending it all first it was Jake Paul going out there and flatlining Mike Perry now it's Bilal Muhammad winning a decision win over Leon Edwards and oh, I'm just ready to end it all to be honest. Bilal Muhammad, he got his win. Shout out Bilal Muhammad. You know, a lot of people doubted him, especially me. I thought Leon was going to go in here and and knock this guy out, but let's cut Leon Edwards, send his ass to Bellator. It is, I'm done with Leon Edwards at this point, but Bilal Muhammad, shout out you. We need a quick turnaround. Let's put him on the sphere card again. Shafkat Rachmanov. Get this man as active as possible. Fuck it. Put him on next week's Abu Dhabi card. Shafkak Rachmanov versus Blah Muhammad. That's the fight to make next. And now because Leon is just such an idiot and he pretty much just fucked up the whole plan for Islam Makachev to become a double champ because Blah Muhammad has said time and time again his ass is not fighting Islam Makachev. So at this point, you know, it's becoming harder and harder to see Islam as a champion because if Blah Muhammad fights Shafkat Rachmanov next, I don't know if Islam can get past him when like a Shafkat. You know, after watching the first two rounds of Leon versus Blah, I was like, okay, if Leon can get these next three rounds or like knock out or submit Blah Muhammad I can see Islam just running through Leon Edwards but not meant to be I don't know if we're gonna see Islam become a double champ now because of this it is what it is let's keep moving down though Leon Edwards let's cut Leon Edwards you know I want to see his ass in Bellator I guarantee the UFC is paying this man way too much for the attention he brings to the UFC you know, defended that belt two times. Best believe he's game. He should be getting paid decently well. And if that's the case, you know, I don't think UFC is going to keep this man much longer. But in the post-fight press conference, Dana White said he does like Leon Edwards. You know, he is a good company man. There was a name brought out that Dana White said he liked the idea of this fight. Let's do Leon Edwards, Ian Gary at the end of the year next. I think this would be a fun matchup. Do I think Leon Edwards could get this one done? I mean, if fucking Bilal Muhammad was out striking you on the feet, maybe I'm just shitting on Bilal Muhammad too much maybe he's just an underrated maybe he is the goat of this welterweight division but at at this point I'm just so disappointed in Leon I never want I'm I'm praying for this man's downfall now I I don't want to see a single success for Leon Edwards moving forward I'm just so pissed at him and then he goes out there and he has the guts to say you know Oh, I just wasn't feeling myself, you know, this waking up so early, fighting at 5 a.m. Man, fuck you. Everyone else did it. You did it. You hired a sleeping coach or some bullshit to help you with this. There should be zero excuses other than you're just dog shit. I don't know how the hell he went undefeated for 15 years. And now that Blood Muhammad just showed the blueprints on how to beat Leon Edwards, I can see Ian Gary running through this guy. Let's keep moving over. Tom Aspinall. First round, first minute KO over Curtis Blades. Feels bad for Curtis Blades, but it is what it is. Honestly, the outcome that I think everyone expected. This fight, I was very nervous because I could see a way where Curtis Blades could have got it done. But to be honest, I'm happy we did it because I really want to see Tom Aspinall, John Jones next. It's seeming more and more likely that John Jones is going to finally fight Stipe Mayochitz and then, and then not just full on retire after that. Dana has hinted at it. Dana says that, you know, he knows John Jones pretty well. And if he's John Jones, he's fighting Tom Aspinall next to prove that he is the undefeated, undisputed GOAT of the UFC. So this is the fight that is next to be made. Let's keep moving down though. Curtis Blades, fortunately lost this fight. It, it is what it is. You know, we all expected this to happen. And, you know, I think next fight, win or lose. And I think his next opponent, win or lose regardless, his next opponent should be someone like a Cyril gone. 
a fun matchup fresh matchup honestly this is like a 50 50 type of matchup in my opinion depending on how serial gone looks against volkov if serial gone looks amazing on the ground like if volkov can get serial on the ground and can spring back up super easy and show off some new next level takedown defense i think it'll be more in that gone favor to win this fight but as of right now a 50 50 fight that is a fresh matchup in that heavyweight division moving down patty pimblet you know a lot of these ones are pretty self-explanatory they called out their guy you know win or lose again it's been while St. Denise, I think the next matchup is Money Moicano of course there should be no question about this and I think this is the fight that the UFC is going to make next both of these guys want to fight each other so at that point make this one next hopefully early next year I would say depending on how the Benoit St. Denise fight goes and then moving down freaking Bobby Green idiot shoots for a second there's been a lot of low level iq plays in this car that just pissed me off bobby green being one of them i don't know why he thought it was a good idea to try to take down patty pimlet but he did maybe it was because he was fighting super super late at night pretty much early in the morning actually and he wanted to go to bed so we just let patty pimlet choke him out so he can get a quick nap so if you really think about it it was just a big brain iq play from bobby green he, he needed his nap and patty pimlet just gave it to him at this point this man needs to change his name back to bobby green but let's mash him up with someone like a ludovic klein this man's on a winning streak he deserves a jump up in competition in the rankings right now Bobby Green is probably going to be out of the top 15. So giving him an up-and-comer, see if he can do well there. If he can be this up-and-comer, then he can get another crack at that top 15. And yeah, moving down, Gregory Rodriguez got that decision win over CLD. I don't know how Christian Leroy Duncan was the favorite to go in this fight. I pretty much predicted exactly what was going to happen in this fight. I did think he was going to get him out of there with that ground and pound, but he ended up just beating him up all three rounds and... Let's give him a jump up in competition, a fight that I think should be really, really fun. A fight that hasn't happened before. Give me Rodriguez versus Andre Munez. I think this would be a fun matchup. Both of these guys really high level on the ground. And Gregory Rodriguez just has that nasty ground and pound. I think this is what should be next. Let's move over Arnold Allen. You know, they pretty much call this guy out. I think this would be a fun matchup, also a fresh matchup. Give him a year. I think this would be a super, super fun matchup on the feet. Pretty identical to someone like a Giga in certain aspect, being very dynamic. Yeah, I just think this would be a fun fight. I think Yair is on his way out anyways. Arnold Allen just looking better and better as time goes on. And yeah, let's match these two up next. I think this would be a really, really fun matchup. Moving down to the loser of this main card opener, we have Giga. I think we match him up someone unranked. I think Giga's probably going to be around number 13 maybe even 14 in the division now let's match him up to someone who is deserving of a top 15 matchup deserving of a big name someone who again is just deserving to get into a ranking spot here i'm talking about dan give me two seconds Ige. give this man a half a second notice to fight giga best believe he's taking that and he's running giga's pockets with it plus at this point like i said in my prediction video i think giga is also on his way out hasn't been looking that great in his last performances and you know his last fight other than arnold allen i think it was like a year ish ago he did not look the same this fight he did look a little bit better i'll give him that but the inactivity is what's killing him plus I just don't think he's going to be the same fighter. Let's give him something like a Dan Ige. And yeah, that's every single person on that main card. If there's someone there that you would change up, let me know in the comments below. But let's run through this prelim card now. We have a bunch of fighters to go through. So we're going to speed run this a little bit. I'll give you some reasons here and there. Others, there's not really that much thought that goes into it. But Nathaniel Wood, he's on a winning streak now. I think we give him someone close in the rankings. Talking about Sadiq Youssef, he's coming off a two-fight losing streak. Last one in UFC 300 against Lopez, so he's ready to fight. And again, let's see this fight maybe towards the end of the year. Give him December or November card. I think that'd be a fun matchup. Moving down, Bruna Brazil. <laughs> Freaking beat up Molly McCann. Kicked her in the vagina. Destroyed her insides with some of those knees and kicks. Hurt her bad to the body. Honestly, <laughs> Molly McCann is someone who should be cut and put into a bellator promotion but just because she's one of the most entertaining and just one of the more exciting fighters in just women's mma they're gonna keep her around bruno brazil on the other hand you know fighting someone super hot way way higher in the rankings compared to her i still don't think we give her someone super high in the rankings but we definitely do reward her with someone who should who she could beat, also could lose against at the end of the day it's women's mma who really cares 
Elise Reed, give her this one next. Both these girls on a winning streak now. Let's keep moving down. Molly McCann, like I said, she should be cut and like thrown to Bellator, bare knuckle, some bullshit like that. But you know, she is a fan friendly fighter. A lot of fans like her. Again, one of the bigger names in women's MMA. They're gonna keep her around. Let's give her someone that she can bounce back. She should bounce back. Knock this girl out brutally. Get her back. Get her some mojo back. I'm talking about. Montserrat Ruiz. Now, one of my wife's friend's name is Montserrat, but it's actually pronounced Montserrat. And the entire time this girl fought last, the whole commentary booth was calling her Monster Rat. I don't know. I find that funny. And yeah, it's one of my guilty pleasures, whitewashing Mexican names. But regardless, this girl has been knocked out three times in a row. I believe it could be even more, but pretty much a free win for Molly McCann. I think this should be booked next. Keep moving down. Jake Hadley got a win in a weight division above what he usually fights in. So give him someone like a Matt Schnell. If he can't beat Matt Schnell, let's get him to move up in weight because he looks really good in that weight division. I'm not going to lie. Moving down, Mohamed Mokayev. Now, this man should be fighting for like the title next just because that flyweight division is so dead. But I don't know if you guys watched that Dana White post-fight interview, but Dana White said they ain't re-signing this man. His ass is getting shipped to Bellator. So Mohamed Mokayev, have fun at Bellator. It was nice having you. Kind of a kind of a shame, but it is what it is. No one really cares about that flyweight division. Yes, he is one of the bigger prospects in that flyweight division, but it is what it is. Dana White has spoken. The matchmakers don't like him, so more likely than not, you know, maybe they'll keep him around. Because they were asking Dana White, is it, is it because, you know, he's asking for too much money? Is he asking for less fights on his contract? And Dana pretty much just said, no, we don't like the guy. His ass is getting shipped to Bellator, so have fun at Bellator. <laughs> Let's move down, Manel Cap. This is also a very frustrating fight. I forgot just how frustrating it was. But Manel Cap did break his toe in the first maybe it was the second round it, it is what it is i want to see him against kai kara france next i think kai kara france is scheduled to fight at the next pay-per-view in a few weeks time so win or lose hopefully you know i don't think it's warranted if he wins for him to have manel cap next i think if if kai kara france loses then we give him manel cap but if he wins we're gonna have to give manel cap someone else i think that's just the more logical answer but yeah this fight should be made next they are already scheduled to fight each other. There's some bad blood here and there with these two. We just saw recently against Muhammad Makaya that the bad blood is just all fake. And it's honestly just so cringy having them have all this bad blood just to have 15 minutes of them fighting, then hugging and kissing in the octagon afterwards. It's very, very cringy in my opinion. But moving down, Oben Elliott, decision win over Preston Parson. Now, moving a little bit higher in the division. Nothing crazy. It's given Trevin Giles. Scheduling wise, it should work out perfect for these guys. Fresh matchup. Get these guys in here by the end of the year. Let's keep moving down modeska's got that submission win over prashkneo now give him someone a little bit higher in the rankings nothing super high this guy he his opponent is on a little bit of a losing streak i'm talking about ian kutalabe i think this would be a really fun matchup plus we can see if ian kutalabe's ground game has improved since last time just a fun matchup all around Let's keep moving down sam peterson of course got that win match him up someone a little bit higher in the division we're still not gonna like feed him any killers we still need to give him some tests here and there i think gabriel green is a good test for him we got two more to go mick parkin got that ko win i believe in that first round still undefeated let's give him someone a little bit higher in the rankings i don't know if this guy's even ranked he might be slightly ranked so maybe we'll get mick parkin in the rankings i'm talking about marcos lima a good test for mick parkin to test out his ground game because we hardly ever see any of it so a good test for mick parkin plus if he gets this win i think this puts him in the top 15 if not he's a fight away from being in the top 15 then finally shannon got that decision win obviously it should have been a win because her opponent was like a tiktok of girl so let's just rebook the ravina olivera fight i don't see why not women's mma especially a fight like this who really cares but yeah that's every single fight on this card that i think we should match up next let me know what did you guys think of ufc 304 because i had some pretty high hopes going into this card it slowly started to die out even dana was pissed at the pro at the post fight interviews because he was like this is the last time I'm ever offering anyone like a 100k, 200k, 300k bonus because these guys don't know how to fight. They don't care for the extra money incentive and it's kind of disappointing, but you guys have to let me know in the comments below. How did you guys enjoy this card? How excited are you guys now that Bilal Muhammad is champion? Because in my opinion, I'm so excited. I think I think we need to see more of him. I think we need to see him next week against Shafkat at that Saudi Arabia card. That's how excited I am to see 
to see Bilal Muhammad champion. And yeah, you know, we're on that goal to get to 500 subscribers. We might have hit it by now. If not, we're literally one, two, three, three subscribers away. So subscribe with those post notifications turned on so you don't miss any more of these rare videos. And yeah, there's really not much else left to say. I might go end it all relatively soon here, depending on how the next few fights go. Because like I said, I made a video on if these fighters win, I'm going to end it all. And I had an honorable mention in five other fights. Right now, I'm 0-2. So, so maybe I curse every other fight. I don't know. All I know is if you don't hear from me, if you don't see me posting, you guys know what happened. But at the end of the day, there's really not that much else left to say except for I might see you <laughs> in my next video.